Hello guys, in a video uh, last week we took a look at the servo tester that's not working properly anymore. So what I'm doing today is trying to get that working with a Paduk microcontroller. So these are a really cheap microcontroller. The programmer is not cheap but the chips themselves are pretty cheap. So I just wanted to learn how to use them and I thought this might be a good example to get started and learn how to control a servo with them. To help get started I found this uh, Westside Electronics uh, tutorial or explanation to be pretty useful. He has some code at the bottom of the page. So I used that as a starting point for my code so I'd recommend reading that article. In my code then the first thing we have is the variables. So I've got the variables outside this function. That's so that we can access these variables from the interrupt routine later on. So we have two pulse counters because we need to count to 624 to get our 20 millisecond gap for our pulse on our servo so the first counter is going to count to 208 and the second counter is going to count to 3 every time the first counter rolls over so that gives us our 624 these three bytes then they are going to be the pulse widths that we want to reach uh, for each of our servos so we have three outputs, three servos, so we need three variables to individually control each of those servos. 31 pulses is around about one millisecond, that's uh, roughly zero degrees on a servo. And 63 is around about two milliseconds, which is roughly 180 degrees on a servo. And 47 is somewhere around about 90 degrees. The next part of our code then is setting up the uh, chip basically so we have our system clock frequency then we set up our outputs for port A. We are using pins 0, 3 and 4 on port A so they're all set to outputs there. The next register we set is probably the most important that's the timer 16 mode register. So if we start from left to right here so bits 7, 6 and 5 they determine what the clock source is for timer 16 so in our case we're using IHRC which is 100 and that is 16 megahertz internal clock because I, I'm only using the internal oscillator on this chip I'm not uh, wiring up an external oscillator the next two bits so we are uh, five, uh, sorry, four and three. They are the pre-divider. So we want quite a fast uh, frequency from our interrupt. So I've got that set to zero, zero. So the uh, pre-divider is one. The final three bits then are two, one and zero. And they determine at what bit the uh, interrupt triggers. So we have a 16 bit timer and 000 tells it that we want the timer to trigger when the 8 bit it becomes status 1 and basically we've chosen all those values to make sure that the interrupt is triggering as fast as possible so the formula for the uh, frequency that the interrupt is triggering at is the clock frequency divided by the pre-divider that we've picked divided by 2 to the power of the uh, bit that we chose the timer to interrupt at plus 1 so in our case um, if you look at the formula there is F, P and N our F is 16 megahertz our P we set to 1 and our N we set to 8 so you put those values into the formula and you get 31,250 hertz or 31.25 kilohertz to figure out the time then between the uh, interrupts we divide 1 by our frequency and that gives us 0 0.032 milliseconds to get that in terms of our servo times then we know that we need a 20 millisecond uh, or roughly a 20 millisecond period between pulses sent to our servo so that's 20 milliseconds divided by our 0 0.032 interrupt interval that gives us 625 pulses between the uh, signals that we need to count so 
to make it a little bit easier I picked 624 because we could then uh, count to 208 on one byte and count to 3 on another byte it's just a little bit easier then for our angles we know that we need 1 millisecond pulse for 0 degrees 2 milliseconds for the 180 degrees and 1.5 is roughly 90 degrees so when you do the same formula again you end up with 1 millisecond equaling 31.25 pulses obviously we can't have 0.25 of a pulse so that's we we'll say 31 pulses and for our 180 degrees angle is 2 milliseconds comes out to 62.5 pulses so we can just say 63 pulses for that one and 47 for the uh, 90 degree angle but realistically once you have your two outer limits you're just going to be varying between the 31 and the 63 the next three registers on our code here basically just enable the interrupts then we have what would usually be our loop but because we're not actually doing that in the loop it's just blank uh, eventually we'll be adding in the ADC control there so that we can read a uh, voltage from a potentiometer and vary the angles of our servos but for now we just want to get control of the servo so all our control is basically handled in the interrupt routine whenever the interrupt is triggered the program goes to this code here it doesn't matter what it's doing it just leaves whatever it would be doing in the while loop and just jumps to this code and runs it straight away so first thing it does here is just clear the register so we're, we're back counting from zero again so that we're not losing any time because it's just immediately triggered now so if we were to run all of this code before this point then we lose however long it takes to run all this code but if we clear this register now it starts counting again so while we're carrying out this uh, this code here our time is still remaining accurate the next bit of our code is where we uh, increment our pulse 1 count so like I said we're going to increment pulse 1 to 208 and if we reach 208 we're going to clear pulse 1 and we're going to add 1 to pulse 2 the, the counter for pulse 2 eventually uh, pulse count 2 is going to reach 3 at that point we set all our outputs to 1 and we clear both counters so we're back to the start again so every time we're at zero zero all three outputs are high so they, they're going to be at five volts then the rest of our code is handled here so as the counter is continuing to increment we're only going to worry about pulse count one because these three pulses are all going to be under 63 uh, pulses long so we only need to count to 63 here or a maximum of 63 so what will happen when pulse count 1 reaches the value of pulse A which is up here so that's 31 when that pulse count reaches 31 this output is going to turn off then the next count is slightly higher it's 47 so it will continue to count pulse 1 until this reaches 47 and then this will also turn off so now we're only left with this one on and that's going to turn off when we reach 63 so now we're at pulse count 1 equal to 63 all these three outputs are off so they're at 0 volts pulse count 1 is going to continue incrementing here with the plus 1 until it reaches 208 at that point pulse count 1 goes back to 0 and pulse count 2 is going to go from 0 to 1 so then the code is going to continue to run these are all still 0 because we have not reset it we haven't reached this condition here so these are all still zero but pulse count one is going to reach 31 again but it doesn't actually matter because it's already off anyway so we're just telling it to continue to be off and that code is going to continue to run until pulse count two reaches three and the whole thing resets again the outputs all go high and then we're back at the start again okay so we're hooked up to one of the outputs on the Paduk microcontroller now you can see on the scope here that our pulse duration we're at 19.8 that's the period between the two pulses so that's roughly right we want about 20 milliseconds between the pulse on the servo so that's what you would expect we have our 
pulse then if I bring this in we are one millisecond on that pulse so that's what we would expect if we move it to the next pin slightly larger let me just zoom in a little so on the next pulse we are 1.5 1.5 milliseconds so that's about the 90 degree mark and the last pulse hopefully around about 2 milliseconds so 2.04 milliseconds is the width of that pulse so all our pulses are coming out pretty much the way we wanted them which is pretty ideal so that's all three outputs okay so here is our Paduk microcontroller as you can see there is no other circuitry here we have our 5 volts coming from the power supply that's it the servo is the only thing that's connected to the microcontroller so we are in the first pin here which should be zero degrees roughly it depends on the servo uh, company or manufacturer so it's gonna be roughly zero degrees then that should be our 90 degree mark so that's directly in the center and that's our two millisecond pulse so that should be 180 degrees roughly so two milliseconds um, 1.5 milliseconds and one millisecond so that's that to me looks like it's only moving around about 90 degrees that's probably just the servo uh, that we're looking at i guess uh, i could get an RC uh, receiver and we could do a little comparison but I think this is uh, enough for this video we'll do that in a, in a separate video maybe and also following up I'm, I'm going to get the uh, potentiometer working so my intention is to get one of these chips and replace uh, this little microcontroller in here that doesn't seem to be working so this microcontroller sent the same signal to all three uh, servos but I'm going to try and get three individual controls from the servo. So for this chip, I need to get one button input working. I need to get the uh, the potentiometer input working. So that's an ADC, an analog input. And then the three output LEDs. But that won't be a problem because we used the same Paduk microcontroller in this uh, little decoration that we made at Christmas. So we've already worked with uh, controlling LEDs from this microcontroller. So that was just a start to try and learn how to control some servos from one of these little microcontrollers. We have a little bit more work to do to finish our servo tester, but I think we're well on the way. So, hope you liked that video. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button. And as always, thanks very much for watching. Thanks very much for watching, guys. If you liked the video, please hit the like button. And if you don't want to miss out on the next video, click the subscribe button below and get the bell on for notifications. A big thanks to all our patrons, sponsors and you guys buying the PCBs for your own projects. That all helps to support the channel and keep the content coming. And speaking of content, there should be links on the screen now to a few more videos if you want to keep watching. And if you go to the channel homepage, you'll see that there are plenty of playlists there to check out. But that's all I have for today, so I'll see you in the next video.